What's up, everybody? Ryan Brezan back here with Talking Point of the Day. The book we have is The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. Wow, amazing book on marketing. Again, this was recommended to me by Tim Ferriss. I listened to his podcast, and it's pretty funny how many of my books that I've read are from him. He has great book recommendations. He actually has dedicated episodes to where he'll gloss over his top five books and what he's learned from them and then why they're his favorite. So it's actually similar to what I do. And this is how I grab a lot of books because I see Tim is very successful. He's doing what he loves and enjoys. And he's very uh, philanthropic at the same time. So he gives back to the community. He helps with research in different areas. I don't know why I'm out of breath. <clears throat> different areas such as psychedelic research and mental health and he invests in very uh, various small businesses and and groups and helps them succeed so I think he's a very good person to model after so this book getting to it a 22 immutable laws of marketing so it obviously it has 22 laws that it goes over and really the first one I don't remember the exact name but I think it's like the law of perspective or something like that and in reality, it's just the law of being first. According to this book, which it makes very true sense, the, the reason this is a, a good book and very well known, is that all the laws really do make sense. Uh, so the first law is the law of perspective. You wanna be first in the customers or in the consumers or the economy, whatever you wanna call it, in their mind first. Coke was in everybody's mind first as the first soft drink, soft drink the first pop the first soda Pepsi came second therefore the market share is modeled after the order at which they were implemented into the, the consumers minds so uh, coke I'm, I'm just gonna make up percentages but the the ratios are similar to this meaning that coke owns let's say half or close to half is, uh, of the market share or maybe even more let's just say two-thirds and then uh, company number two, the second choice, always owns about 25% uh, or close to that other third. And then there's usually smaller companies that own like 5%, 4%. And in terms, we're speaking, if, let's say the third or fourth company, I don't know, in this case, Soda, there's so many. Let's just say a less well-known one, probably a conglomerate that owns like Mr. Pib and stuff like that, but still gets sold in uh, fast food restaurants and all that. Uh, that four percent that they own is still probably a billion dollars or hundred hundreds of million dollars uh, in such an economy or a business as a soda or something so big so widespread uh, so it's not necessarily like you're making pennies uh, but if that four percent is billions of dollars think how much that 60 percent that coke has it's another level and i think if you're watching this and me too I want to be on that other level. I don't just want to be the fourth percenter. Uh, that's not my goal, right? If I end up owning a business or being a part of a business that is still making billions of dollars and that's 4%, hey, that's not the worst thing in the world like I've already outlined. But like I said, we're not here to be the 4%. We're here to be the major owner. We're here to be the majority, that 60%, number one, the winner. And that's I, I hope that's why you're watching this video and I assume that's why you're here. But uh. So that was that's the that's the first law, and it's it makes so much sense that the there's always a company that you associate with uh, a product like okay Kleenex. Uh, you think Kleenex is literally tissues. You think Kleenex are Kleenexes, but that's just a brand, and that's the perfect example right there of the law of perspective. If you get in the consumer's minds that they associate your brand with a product. That's the ultimate goal, and that's going to establish you as the kingpin, as the dominant factor in that product line. So I think that's that's an amazing example. And then there's other ones in the book, like I'm, I'm trying to think of them. Uh, they give you different laws. So if you are number two, okay, what do you do then? How can you differentiate yourself from the leading product number one? So going back to the soda example. Uh, Coke is the original. They have a formula that they've been doing for a hundred years. Okay, Pepsi and they uh, in this book they talk about how each company kind of goes back and forth. Sometimes they do good marketing. Sometimes they mess themselves up with their own marketing. Uh, so Pepsi in this case they did good marketing. Where I think like in the seventies, they uh, I don't remember the exact terminology that they use, 
but they were like, hey, we are the new, yeah, we are the new generation. That's what it was, the new generation drink. So Coke is the original, and that is their strength. If you find yourself in that number two place, don't bullshit yourself. Don't say, oh my gosh, let's try to do the same thing that number one's doing and just talk crap and you're, you're always doing the same thing. No, use their strength to your advantage. Their strength is that they were the original. Okay, now we're going to be the new generation. We got the old farts right here that like Coke and they're making a ton of money off of them. That's great. Guess what? We're not going to try to tap into that because we're never going to get as much because we're not number one. We're going to tap into a new market and talk to the younger generation and say, hey, that's what your parents drink. Do you want to be like your parents? Do you want to drink the same stuff your parents are drinking that they've been doing? No, they're old. Drink this new one. This is for young people. I think like they used Michael Jackson in their uh, marketing and their advertising, and it actually was very successful. So I think that's this is a beautiful story just from the two laws out of this whole book. And there's tons more talking about how to get in the customer's mind and uh, what to do if you're not number one. And uh, man, there's just, there's so many, 22 laws. They're all great. Uh, I highly recommend this book. I implemented it in myself just to, to challenge and kind of test and question myself and say, okay, how can I make my product be uh, number one, and then if it's not number one in their minds, okay, how can I change that first and foremost? How can I actually get in their mind? And then what different avenues can I take to make my marketing strategy better? Uh, I think one last clear lesson I learned from this book or that the authors argued, it's not necessarily uh, having the best product that wins. Uh, you do need to have a good product, but it's about getting in their mind first that makes you win. And I, I think that's a big uh, shakeup from what we're used to hearing. We Everybody wants to have the best product and there's tons of good products out there. But if you're not on the middle shelf in the grocery store because you're not the most well-known in, in an example like this, you're not gonna get bought the most. That's just fact. And again, it's not necessarily bad to be in that 4% bracket. I think uh, when you start a business though, that's not what you aim for. You don't aim for uh, you don't aim for the clouds, you aim for the moon, right? And then if you miss, you you land among the stars. I mean, we've all heard that. It's the same concept. So I think this book beautifully wraps up all these lessons. And y'all, I'm, I'm really just glossing over. I, I went over two laws. There's 22 laws and they're all gold. Uh, this book was written in 1994. A theme I like to go over is if the book stands the test of time, there's a reason it's still here. There's a reason it's still valuable. And there's value that you can get from it. Get this book by Al Rise and Jack Trout, 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing. Violate them at your own risk. Great book, y'all. Buy into it, dig into it, invest in yourself because you are the most important asset that you have. Peace.